How's it going, folks? So there's a question posted on Quora. And I know many in the community, if you read the question or you hear me repeat the question on this video, you're going to realize, hey, yeah, the person who asked this question did so in bad faith. So that being said, there is a lot to unpack with this question that's being asked. It's really quite telling. Uh, so that being said, the person posted, the more responses I get from the gun crowd, the more convinced I am that they should not be allowed access to weapons. I am seriously attempted, uh, attempted to report them to authorities. Is this unusual? And that is the question. Now, I'm going to start by saying I don't believe this person genuinely went out and had good faith discussions with the gun crowd. I know many of us are saying, yeah, they, you know, they didn't. Um, uh, most likely the person who asked this question already had their mind made up. And they're just posting this to bolster their support for gun control. And, you know, and by the way, it's uh, another reason why many on my side of the aisle say, time to get rid of all these gun laws. They don't work. People like that are never going to be satisfied. We've got a bunch of gun laws as is, still not satisfying these people. It's time to do away with them. It's time for us to stop sacrificing a freedom that we value. A constitutionally protected freedom, by the way, that we value to appease people like this. But it goes even further. So one of the first things I wanted to unpack with this <coughs> is the fact that it is the gun crowd, as this person puts it, that are the ones that have stuff to lose. Simply put, if it was the gun crowd that won, and we got all of those gun laws taken off the books that we have in the U.S. as is, well, the person asking this question they aren't going to be fined for not having enough ammo. They're not going to go to jail for not having the right gun or the right amount of guns or the right types of guns. No, it's going to be people on our side that are either going to have to give up our property, give up our freedom, a freedom we value, or possibly risk prison time and possibly even get shot by the ATF or the police, you know. So yeah, it's our side that has something to lose. And what's being discussed is infringements to our side, not yours. So this is what, you know, so right there, this is the crux of why many of us are so upset with you guys is because you're talking about infringing on freedoms that we value. You're talking about possibly taking our property, taking our stuff. You know, if you lose, you know, there's nothing else done. You know, you don't go to prison. You don't do get fined or risk getting shot by the police because you weren't compliant with their law. Example, back in the 80s and 90s, that's when shall issue concealed carry was on the national debate. And basically, for those who don't know, the main thing that was being discussed, the main topic that was being discussed was allowing people who have these things to be able to go through a few additional more background checks, pay a certain fee, get fingerprinted, get photo ID'd, and then they would be allowed, after a certain number of courses, a certain number of classroom hours, uh, to carry these in public concealed provided they've gone through all the previous steps and qualified for the license to carry the person on the uh, the person who asked the question their side of the aisle claimed that this would lead to blood in the streets apocalyptic gun battles at fender benders and traffic stops none of this stuff materialized by the way but it doesn't stop them from recycling this retarded talking point whenever somebody discusses lifting gun-free zones 
you know, letting people with concealed carry permits carry in places that were classified gun-free zones, such as campus carry in Texas, um, the gun controllers decided they thought it would be cute to lie about what this allows. They were claiming stuff like, well, now your 19-year-old daughter is going to be able to carry while drinking in a bar outside of campus. Not true, but when has the gun control side of this ever been honest? You know, or would permitless carry? They recycled some of the same nonsense claims that they did uh, when shall issue concealed carry was being discussed. It's like these people have no shame in lying whatsoever. Um, another example of them moving the goalpost, by the way. Current example right now. The ATF is discussing reclassifying braced pistols as SBRs. Now, they made the ruling back in 2012 that these braces did not constitute stocks, and therefore... These are not SBRs. Now, since then, the gun controllers have demanded they change that. And the arguments being used is the fact that, you know, what was that there were two crimes committed with a brace pistol that they cite on that proposed rule change on the ATF's website. Well, lowest number of estimate, uh, estimated base, uh, braced pistols are 1.3 million in circulation. So, if anything, they should probably remove SBRs from the NFA list and not put braced pistols on the NFA list. You know, and their estimates are a lot higher than 1.3 million. 1.3 million is like the absolute bottom. Their estimates as high as 10 million. However, if the ATF goes through with this proposed rule change, People who know about it, well, we're going to have to figure out what we need to do to make our stuff either compliant or we'll have to go through the NFA Title II process just to keep property we already had or get rid of property we already had. It's not cheap, by the way. Uh, this setup right here cost me about $3,000. You know, now I know it's more of an expensive one, um, but usually with those uh, braced pistols, you're usually spending at least a thousand bucks. And there are going to be many more who had no idea that this rule change was even being discussed. Two, three, ten years down the road, don't even know that what they have is now considered an unregistered SBR, get stopped, and they get caught with it and get face up to 10 years in prison. So, no, these are not minor inconveniences, what the gun controllers are proposing. And this is one of the things that, yeah, we have a genuine problem with the gun controllers over this. They refuse to even acknowledge that what they're doing is pretty damn serious. It's a pretty damn serious infringement onto us. I mean, even, and I do own NFA stuff, even with the NFA and the paperwork, there are still states I can't take this stuff into because even though I have it registered with the federal government, went through all the extra hoops to get this stuff, well, it's still illegal in those states. In fact, if I want to take this out of state beforehand, I got to go get permission from the ATF and that type of uh, paperwork takes about a month to process. And then I can only take it to the specific states that I listed, and it has to be legal in those states. Sound suppressors. Um, back in uh, 2018, you had an incident where somebody took a sound suppressor and committed a mass killing with it. And it's the only incident with a lawfully owned suppressor that I'm aware of that somebody committed a crime with it. You know, but yet... Despite all the restrictions we have on it, that wasn't good enough all of a sudden for the gun controllers who wanted these things banned after the fact, you know? And yeah, Trump 
you know, was one of the ones that was saying, I don't like suppressors, you know, and kicked around the possibility of one them band too. So, you know what? Trump got a lot of heat for that. And he should have, you know, so by the way, that rig right there, I showed you, um, all in all is $4,000. So yeah, I mean, these aren't minor inconveniences that the gun controllers are talking about. These aren't anywhere near being just minor inconveniences or nothings to them. It might be nothing because they don't own anything like that, but to the people they're targeting. Yeah. So yeah, my side of the aisle does have a genuine grievance with the gun controllers. You know, um, <coughs> this, this cost me $2,300. Guess what? There is a state, at least one state, that I know of, this is illegal in 100%. And the restriction, the law that made it illegal in that state, it's pretty ridiculous law. You know, and it's based on pretty ridiculous premises. So yes, there are a number of grievances my side of the aisle has with the gun controllers. But like the abusive people you are, you refuse to acknowledge that. But we're going to get in to another aspect of abuse where you guys are doing, and that's the red flag law. So this was actually mentioned in the question. Um, they wanted to report the these gun crowd people to the authorities, uh, presumably to red flag them. Okay, with red flag laws, you're talking about Somebody being able to go to the courts. You don't even have any idea they're going to the courts. You can't defend yourself in these courts. And all they had to do is lie to the judge. And then the judge issues a red flag order. Then they come, they send police officers in and confiscate your guns and possibly shoot you in the process. Uh, that's happened at least twice. Taking your guns and then, if you're lucky, you get to go before the courts and plead to why that you should get your guns back. That is completely wrong. That is completely a minority report style situation. And moreover, I, get, I can think of at least three cases off the top of my head where red flag laws have been abused. And in two of those cases, somebody was killed by the police and then in one of those cases one of the people that filed the red flag laws even came out and admitted they didn't you know they overstated the danger to the courts and they really just did it to get back at their uncle these red flag laws are ripe for abuse and it's especially people like the person asking this question is the reason why i do not want one of the many reasons why but it is a major reason why I do not want red flag laws in place. So, I cannot stress that enough of why I am so glad that in many states we still don't have red flag laws and I wish the states that had them would repeal them. The next area I want to unpack, data manipulation. Gun controllers do this constantly. They will put themselves up as being objective researchers when in fact they're not. Uh, they will put data manipulation out in packages as a study when in fact it's not. It's just simple data manipulation. One example that comes to mind, and it still comes to mind even though the example is decades old, is the Kellerman study. The reason why is because you still have people who cite stuff that, you know, uses a similar premise to the Kellerman study. Um, and again, when I say Kellerman study, I'm using that loosely because after his study was released for peer review, it got torn apart. He had to keep going back and revising a lot of stuff. And even after he revised it, down and drop the number down to you at three times as likely, there were still problems with it, inherent flaws with that study, so to speak. 
that, you know, lead people into believing the wrong conclusion or misleading people. And by the way, what took Kellerman to actually release his work for peer review was the fact that the federal government said, hey, if you don't do this, we're going to revoke your funding. So begrudgingly, Kellerman did so. And when he did so, well, it turned out he was using things like suicides in his number. Um, he was doing things like um, selectively picking communities. He was doing things like including gang members into the acquaintance category. Well, I'm sure rival gang members, you know, probably know who the other members of the other gangs are. It's just I wouldn't consider them necessarily friendly to one or another. So, I mean, those are other examples. Now, where the uh, study is fatally flawed is the fact that most defensive gun uses don't end up with a dead assailant. The objective of a defensive gun use is to protect your life and the life of your loved ones. It's not to leave a dead body. Sometimes it happens, but in most cases it doesn't. There are a number of home invasions where the homeowner brandishes a firearm and the home invaders retreat. There are a number of occasions where the homeowner actually has to fire a few shots at the home invaders and then they retreat, you know, and they go to the hospital, get treated for their wounds and survive. Um, there are a number of home invasions where, yeah, I mean, maybe they get one or two of them, but, you know, the others retreat, you know. The fact of the matter is, is that when it comes to a defensive gun use, you're uh, not always going to leave a dead assailant, you know. And if you shoot somebody in the back while they're running away, most courts don't look at it as a defensive gun use anymore. They look at it as a homicide. So, yeah, I mean, somebody tries to break into your home, you pull a gun on them and they turn and run. It doesn't necessarily mean that um, it's not a defensive gun use. Um, that firearm could have very well been the thing that saved your life that night. But if you shoot them in the back, the police and the courts don't look too friendly to that. In fact, they look at it as a uh, manslaughter, involuntary. Well, maybe not involuntary, excuse me. They look at it as a criminal manslaughter. Another example that comes to mind, uh, David, David Hemingway. This man, uh, several years ago, put out a study where, you know, it concluded that uh, more children in the U.S. are killed by gunshot wound uh, a year poor, uh, than, you know, on-duty police officers. Well, I'm not going to go in and dispute the numbers on this one. The study itself is a bad premise. And all it takes is a little bit of perspective to look at it. You know, first off, all he's counting is on-duty police officers. He's not counting police officers that are not on duty. Um, there are far more children in the U.S. than there are police officers. I mean, you can commission a study uh, to find out who dies more in car accidents, children in the U.S. or on-duty commercial drivers. I guarantee you more children in the U.S. die in car accidents than commercial drivers on duty. Um, so they say all of nothing with that. The fact of the matter is there are far more children in cars in the U.S. than there are on-duty commercial drivers. That is just data manipulation designed to mislead the public into having a false conclusion or a sense of fear that they should not have. So, I mean, the list goes on with the data manipulation that these people engage in constantly. You have news outlets like CNN. You'll notice if a mass killer uses an AR-15, 
they'll use the term AR-15, assault weapon, yada, yada, yada. Whenever, you know, somebody defends themselves with an AR-15 or a police officer is using an AR-15, they usually refer to it as rifle and leave the AR-15 part out of it. You know, this is another example of just the sheer amount of manipulation that goes into it from our establishment, shamefully enough. So the next topic is going to be gaslighting and general abuse from the gun control crowd, the gun controllers. You know, for decades, the gun controllers have pointed to countries like Japan, where people have never really had any freedom to own weapons like they do in the U.S., or they'll point to countries like the U.K. or Australia, which gun confiscations did happen there, and then turn around and say, well, nobody's trying to take your guns. They'll throw their support in for somebody like Francis O'Rourke, who said, hell yes, we're going to take your AR-15. Hell yes, we're going to take your AK-47. Well, you know, somebody's AR-15 or somebody's AK-47 is still their gun, is it not? You know, so yeah, you are talking about taking people's guns, and yet your refusal to acknowledge that, even after you've admitted it, is straight gaslighting. What do you want me to say about that? Um, try getting into a discussion with these people where you don't acquiesce, or you don't kowtow to them. They'll block you from their Twitter pages, they'll block you from their subreddits, they'll block you on Facebook. These people don't want to have a genuine discussion. They just want you to agree with them. They want you to acquiesce to them. Moreover, you don't acquiesce to them. You get verbal abuse heaped on you all the time. You know, you cannot tell me there is not a veteran 2A advocate that hasn't at least been accused of having a small penis, being a terrorist, being redneck Taliban, which is kind of ironic because when the Taliban took over Afghanistan, one of the first things they did is start confiscating guns from non-Taliban members. So, you know, it looks like the gun controllers actually have more in common with the Taliban uh, than the uh, redneck Taliban does itself, you know, but they'll do, they'll heap that type of verbal abuse on you. They will take children they've probably coached into their side of the aisle, put them up, and the second you say anything contrary to what those kids are saying, they'll accuse you of being a child hater or accuse you of abusing those poor kids, even though they were the ones that pushed those kids into being public figures and pushed those kids into attacking the 2A crowd for them to do their dirty work for them because they're too chicken shit to do it themselves. Yet we're the ones that are abusive when we have something to say back to them. Yet we're the ones who need to have our guns confiscated when we say back to them, get the fuck out of here with that shit. You know? The fact of the matter is, it's always been the gun controllers that have been incredibly abusive on this. You know, they'll do stuff like publish interactive maps to gun owners' houses in places where they've got gun registrations. You'll have certain gun control activists posing as journalists that go and do that stuff. When was the last time somebody in the gun crowd published an interactive map of all these gun controllers' houses, their address, their private information, their phone numbers. I can't think of a time, I mean, but if somebody can show me, please do. You got the comments down below. With all this, you know, this very same person who's asking this question is doing so in bad faith. They're expecting to be treated like glass after they have gone in and, well, maybe not them personally, but people on their side of the aisle have gone in and personally abused the gun crowd, as they put it, time and time again. So, uh, no, this person is making this in bad faith. Um, you know, 
And anybody who answers that question, it's never going to be good enough for that person. Anyway, folks, you got the comment section below. I know this video is probably a bit longer than my usual, but there was some stuff to unpack with this. So thank you all for watching. You all take her easy out there and have a great day.